Um, I just want to rant for a second. So women and men and feminism and patriarchy or whatever. Okay. So women are basically like, I bring life into this earth. You give me the tools that I need and then I do the work to make it happen. I make you a garden of children, right? And that's generally what religions in general, not any specific one, just in general, religions are about growing your soul garden. So women carry the life into the world and men supply the women with what they need to do that. So then we have all these issues where I live in the United States. So as a woman, I am expected to carry the life into the earth, take care of the environment we live in, which is not fine. Honestly, I think I could do a better job at it. It's pretty messy. Like, look at that closet. But that's... The issue that I have is that <laughs> as a woman in the United States, I'm expected to go be more than just a mother. And if I don't want to be more than a mother and a wife, then I'm not doing enough. I'm not pulling my weight. I'm not making money because I don't have a job. I'm a bad wife because I don't have a job. I can't buy my daughter as many things. But I think that my personal struggle that I have, because there's so many excuses that we can all tell ourselves. And I tell myself excuses all the time. Like I get into a depressive state and tell myself that nothing matters. I'm just not going to do anything. Like like just be happy to have me around but then it's like then you take resources and I think that's where my internal struggle comes from is like the metaphor of man and woman and the planet itself like if you consider the planet as a man and a woman combined into a planet it's like it's constantly giving itself what it needs to create itself. And then you go through the mythology of Uranus and Saturn and Neptune and Pluto and Jupiter and those outer planets kind of mixing gases and elements together in order to create a stone that has a bubble that harbors water through fire from Mars and Venus and Mercury and the sun. But maybe Mars is just a stone, so maybe just Venus, Mercury, and the sun. I don't know. So, if the Earth was constantly giving itself excuses for why it should be taking things away from itself, it wouldn't exist anymore. Like, if the Earth was like, you know what, I need all of these gases and rocks to make the environment. Like, but there can become a point where the resources on the planet aren't reproducing themselves enough to create the right greenhouse gases, greenhouse gas effect, to have a stable ozone layer. So then it's like, even if the Earth has what it needs, if it takes too much of it in one moment it won't have it anymore and just use an example as of like burning a log in a fire or mars <laughs> so it's like to expect something just because you're a woman and just because you do carry life into the world is wrong and that's where feminism messes up to me but to not understand what a woman's body sacrifices
And then to compare that to physical labor from a job as if you're not giving a part of your DNA and your spine. Like you're literally changing the structure of your body. Which is something that you do as a mother. Like you change the structure of your body to build your body around your child. And you guys work together and your body has changed from that moment and it will never be the same. But you can have that moment from somebody donating something through a stick and putting that inside of you. And that's a resource. But the power of man is to hold strength and not change and I think that's when I made that apple versus pear video the first time I got out of the psych unit at Havenwick it was like the pear separates from the stem but the apple's core is right in the center and the, the parts where the apple separates are on the top and the bottom and the parts where the pear separates are in the center <sighs> So, it's like respecting, and now I'm just thinking of the whole, like how you, some religions bury their placenta after birth and plant something there to show for it. And that's giving your what you worked for back into the earth. But in the United States, we burn our placentas in waste or they donate it to a stem bank and make vaccines and inject it into strangers. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Maybe that's not real. Maybe I just read that somewhere. <sighs> and then... <laughs> like all of the plastic that we make like plastic to sanitize things to make things like we're literally digging into the past into things that have already died to create a substance to hold something which is actually gotta be I'm, okay I'm gonna start my period in, on Sunday so but we're literally, like, that's what we are. We are vessels that hold a source of electricity and water, and that electricity amplifies the water, and water holds memory, and we move it around inside of our body, and our vessel decides what to do with it. And we can be mad, and I am mad and sad often, but I'm also happy often. And that doesn't mean it's not normal, because I think that's human. But it's just kind of like we're digging into the earth to make plastic, to put things inside of a container, and oil is literally made from fossil fuel. <laughs> fossil fuel. And even if we don't eat the stuff we grow, if we grew more stuff and constantly added it to the land, we could change the world like we could create more land it's just doing it too fast you lose all your water <sighs> I don't know <laughs> I just I was so angry because it's like I feel like women there are some women who are like we need more power and then there are some women that are like we have power the men do it already and it's just like maybe that's the problem <laughs> like maybe because you feel like not you but because society feels like they have to set up a giant obelisk over a water fountain in washington dc that's gonna solve our problems because of the land that it's on and then you forget 
to recognize the gift that you are sort of your own landmass. You just have the ability to be mobile over an landmass that already exists. Like we're in his image as within, as without, so without, but that so without doesn't sound right to me. And it's like, you want to say as above, so below, but it's really not the same. It's opposites. It's not the, it's not as it is above, as it is below. It's the more heavy something is on the bottom, the lighter it is on the top. So if you center it, you can destroy something and it can disappear. But if you keep doing a balance of like a pendulum where it almost comes back, but then it doesn't, kind of like Pluto, I have some drawings I'm going to end this video with. <clears throat> voice is not on the tone right now but it's kind of funny how human is similar to schumann human 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 um i don't really know what else to say but i feel like i should keep talking over this video because there is a YouTube video playing in the background and I don't want it to seem like that's the YouTube video I'm trying to make. So I guess I'll just talk about this picture where it's kind of like, what is it? The Ibis, Ibis, yeah, the Ibis, uh, Ibis, however you want to say it. Ibis, Ibis, Ibis. And the beak represented as a pendulum. I don't really know why I made this in 2018-2019, but yeah, it's the tail end creating a crystallized structure through the mobile of the galaxy, translating through a light stream that is a concave surface, so it creates a hologram through angles and then those angles are translated through material worlds and then dissipate when the angles are not there anymore. Dissipate when the angles disappear. So even in your mind this is the reverb of the pendulum so it's similar to when you're looking at it from the universe. It's going to come back down. This is Pluto. And it comes back down. And then it goes boing. And it hits the moment when there's a twist. Because of... It's like when you drop a yo-yo. And then the yo-yo has that moment where it bounces and then it can decide to be pulled back up or not. Uh, and it really just depends on the entire environment itself. I'm trying to sound like my voice is lower now. Just because I don't want people to say that I'm trying to sound a certain way because that has been my issue actually lately, but you know, that's a different thing. It's like, We're not allowed to talk about the things that bother us and the people that are negative to us because if we talk about it, we're bringing it up and they never meant it that way. So let it go. It never happened, right? Okay. <laughs> Reminders are cursive and they trigger you through creativity. A process is something that's solid 
and has substance to a point where it's translated across multiple areas and there's a little room for speculation. Yeah, so this is the imprinting that we go through. I posted this on Instagram a long time ago and then deleted it. And this was around the same time that I made a video. And I'm not sure if my reflection showed up, but I made the video after I got out of the shower and I'm not sure if people saw my stretch marks or not. But people started making fun of me about stretch marks around this time. And it's actually kind of funny because it's like, I don't want to bring that up because I don't want to be negative, but looking at it, it's like imprinting. And then this has the imprint of spiritual people making fun of me to try to, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's what I feel. That's what I think of when I see this now is that memory from 2018, 2019 of me trying to connect with people and then getting bullied. So then it's like people just stop trying to connect, I guess. But it's a human, it's like that movie with Will Smith that, um, the movie where he has all the robots. I think it's called iRobot, where it's like even the robots just kind of group together in the dark when they're lonely because it's just part of the nature of consciousness to not be alone so that's why it hurts so much when strangers who you don't even know ostracize you for reasons that they don't even really care about and don't care to explain to you and just want to throw at you because they feel better doing it and i really really don't want to imprint this negativity onto you maybe that's why my tone is off so let me try you you now I'm all nervous. I can't even like end it like I can't hold it because I'm shaking so I'm gonna just maybe end it with a painting with a lot of spirals to kind of zone out to or even honestly like look at if you just look at dust maybe that's why taking LSD makes you feel better because you're focusing on something so small and when you're trying to focus on the bigger picture, it's really hard. So your mind is like focusing on the points. But when you're on LSD, everything blends together or mushrooms or whatever. And everything looks like a little speck. And then you just find beauty in every single individual grain that exists in anything. And maybe that's why microdosing works. Because it's just like, you know what? <sighs> Look at this. And then that's how you get a mosaic. And um, that's Van Gogh's style almost. And that's kind of the style I like. I was going when I did the spiral things when I painted. The fox painting I was doing was like layering just... I was doing squiggles. Layering one line at a time until it kind of created an overlapping image of just individual lines and I was doing it for fun and then I don't know it's like everything I do that's art for fun it's like people are like oh but you're not a professional you could have done better and it's like you're making art not fun for me now I don't know so then I just get into astrology let's look at let's look at the dust let's end the video on the dust And just remember, everything you look at is so unique, it has layers of dust that nobody will ever see the same way as you.